it's time for your political maniacs and in honor of his departure from the United States Congress. This might be the last time that Paul Ryan will be a political maniac here on The Fowler Show. And after our six year run, Paul Ryan has been the maniac. Uh, let's say many times, but why not? One more time, Paul, we're gonna celebrate. In honor of Speaker Ryan's decision to retire, the end of his term, we decided to take a look back at his crusade to cut benefits to the poor in this week's Political Maniacs. Over his 20-year career in Congress, Ryan has largely failed to implement his goal to get this country's debt under control by cutting social, the social safety net, by getting rid of programs like food stamps, by doing entitlement reform to make sure that grandma is thrown off the cliff. Ryan has been on a mission since his, since his entry into the United States House since 1998 to reform and slash many of the key programs that are most, the most vulnerable Americans depend on. Instead of taming the country's deficit, the Speaker is leaving Washington with even more severe debt, a debt crisis on their hands. This week alone, we found out that thanks to President Trump, our national debt has now climbed to $21 trillion. Now here's the funny part, America, before I go into this Paul Ryan thing. Remember four years ago? Remember? Mm, let's say, uh, not four, yeah, four years ago is about right. So four years ago will put us into, what, 2014, guys? 2014. So remember in 2014, when Republicans were like, oh, Lord of mercy, oh my goodness, the national debt, oh Lord, our children are going to be lapped with so much debt. Oh, help us, Lord. Oh, we've got to pray and we've got to solve this debt crisis. Oh, Lord, we're going to get, we're going to not raise the debt ceiling. We're going to lower America's credit rating. We're going to shut down the government because the debt is just too much to bear. Remember that? You remember all the, remember Paul Ryan, McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, Ted Cruz, you name it, talking about our national debt and how awful it is and how bad it is for America that our debt is so high and we got to stop it. And this is the Democrats, these are the liberals. They're taking, oh, they're running the debt up. It's ridiculous. Well, America, in the past 18, 19 months that Trump's been president, we've ran up the debt about four trillion dollars <laughs> under one man and he keeps just signing the bills um, the omnibus spending bill alone ran up our debt about a trillion dollars that doesn't include his tax cut that was not paid for so this is part of the republican hypocrisy they say they're fiscally conservative and they say they care about future generations in this country and that's why they want to cut all these programs so they can solve the debt crisis but america they are the debt crisis. Because every time Republicans are in power, somehow, some way, they manage to explode the deficit. And they explode the national debt. And then when the Democrats are in power, they're like, oh, Lord, look at the debt. Oh, Jesus, I can't stare at it. It's so big. It's so blinding. It's like a solar eclipse. But now that they're running the debt up and they're the ones in control, in control they could care less about our nation's national debt. And so when I talk about when I talk about hypocrisy, when I talk about hypocrisy, this is the hypocrisy I talk about. America. This and don't get me wrong. Some of the Republican policy planks aren't the worst things in the world. Herein lies the problem. You need to have incentives for people to do good, and you also need to have controls. Republicans only believe in incentives. They don't believe in controls. Because if they believed in controls, America, then many of the programs that they've created wouldn't be in the situation they're in. They want the wild, wild west. They can't even control Trump's own cabinet members. They say, well, remember, remember, America, and this is all goes back to this Paul Ryan being the political maniac because he is the biggest hypocrisy, the biggest hypocrite of them all. Remember when President Obama was in office and Republicans would rail about the fraud, waste, and abuse happening in our federal government? Remember that? Well, America, the Trump cabinet is the poster child for fraud, waste, and abuse. Yet, you've heard mums the word from Paul Ryan and his Republican colleagues. You have Scott Pruitt, who we've talked about on the show many times, who is engaged, who's renting houses from lobbyists, who is giving people $57,000 pay raises on the backs of working Americans, 
You have, you have, you know, Ben Carson who spent $31,000 on a dining table. Now, I've been to some very nice places in my life. I really have. I've been very, very blessed to be in some nice places. And I have never in my life ate on a $30,000 dining table. And I just don't know where you would even find a $30,000 dining table. But enlighten me, America. Maybe $10,000, maybe $15,000. But a $30,000 dining table? Good God Almighty. That's just the beginning of the swamp in the Trump cabinet. Although that this and remember, and these are the ones that are still there because you have you know Tom Price who was taking pri a private jet to Philly. Mind you, Philly's about an hour up the road from here. We drove. We went to the convention last year. I think we drove to Philly in about an hour, fifteen minutes. It was a quick ride. It's a, a so you can take the Acela and get there in an hour. But this go. Let, let me go back to Paul Ryan because instead of taming the debt, the speaker is leaving Washington with even more debt on his hands. Right, And in his announcement, when he said he was leaving the United States House, he was giving away the gavel, he toted the passage of the Republican tax bill as the greatest success as speaker. But he never talked about any of his failures, uh, as in running up the debt, as in making it harder for working Americans to get health care. He doesn't talk about any of his failures, just the Republican tax cut as this big success. Here's what Dan Pfeiffer, the former communications director of the White House, had to say. Here's what you need to know about Paul Ryan. His main regret as he leaves Congress is that he failed to take health care away from more people. And Dan Pfeiffer couldn't be more correct. Because remember, every year that he was budget chair, he would pass or he would write up a, 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 a budget and he would call it the pathway to prosperity. But what he never informed the American people is that that, pa that pathway if you were poor, or if you came from, an, if you, depending upon your zip code, that path could be lined with broken glass and you were forced to walk it barefoot. But if you were from another zip code and you were a millionaire or a billionaire, or you were rich and wealthy, you could sort of, you know, zip past all those people walking the glass, broken glass lined road, and you could take your helicopter to prosperity. Paul Ryan tried to, tried to play you and placate America on this ideal that Republicans and the Republican Party and the Republican agenda stood for poor people. But here's the truth. Everybody knows that that's a lie. Because everybody's seen what the Republicans have done as, with their time in office. Instead of helping out the poor, instead of helping out working families, the Republican tax bill was a giveaway to major corporations. And these corporations, America, instead of creating jobs as the president's promised they would, laid people off. And every time they laid people off, we here at the Fowler Show have exposed them. So Paul Ryan is not part of some pathway to prosperity or some great American hero or some great American story of hope, redemption, and some great American story of how Washington works for the American people. No, that's not true. What Paul Ryan stands for is an America that looks out for the rich and the wealthy while the rest of us suffer. <laughs>